Well, isn't it a beautiful day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah. About that. <laughs> oh. You right? Yeah. I just wasn't dug in, I guess. I didn't even move and I just... Okay, somebody just landed on his butt. Yep. We won't mention who. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful world, but not if you have to get around in it. So, Ken and I have been over at the coast. Yep. We had a little guy's trip planned for two days, which this stuff came along and made it... This and a bunch of wind and closed roads made it four days. And we decided we'd try to get over back up. And we made it that far. And uh, I know that the uh, driveway looks like it's snow, but it's actually a glaze of ice. And we've been walking up here about a half a step at a time and sliding back down. <laughs> so we're over on our neighbor's yard right now. And... Uh, Trying to be very careful where we walk. And that's our goal up there. Barely see our house through the trees. But... And then I don't know if we're going anywhere. We got the car that far. Started to make other plans and Ken noticed it had a completely flat tire, which must have just gone flat. So something happened sliding back down the hill, I guess. So we're in the soup. Yep. Probably for another couple of days. It's supposed to be a big ice storm again tomorrow, so could be hunker down time. It's January 16th, and Kenny and I did finally make it up the hill last night, although that was not easy. Even though this looks like a nice little light fluffy snow out there, it is not. It has you fooled if you think that's what it is. It is hard solid ice just like you find in your freezer when you go to defrost it and it is just as slick it, the, you, your feet do not sink in it it is hard and, and you can't even um, unless you're over in the grass you can't like jam your heel down in it to get any footing either so <laughs> supposedly in an hour or so we're supposed to have another ice storm it's going to last for a few hours this afternoon, and then ultimately it is supposed to um, warm up this evening and bring in warmer rain, which hopefully will melt all this. Currently we have our car still down at the bottom of the hill with a flat tire, and uh, really no chance of getting to that until things melt. Well, isn't that beautiful? Got a batch of ice this morning. It's beautiful, but it is a mess. We have a mess to pick up. We got, uh, I got the ladder up there trying to check out if I could, the gutters are all froze and so they're kind of dripping wherever in between the gutter and the fascia. That's not going to change. They're froze solid. But it is a beautiful world out here. And in other news, down the hill, way to the end of the uh, our road, that where it meets the highway, there is a big tree across. So, <laughs> which just came about 30 or 40 feet behind where I had left the car a couple of days ago. So I'm out to the barn seeing if I can take a look at how the chainsaws are. I'll bet they're not sharp. Some of these branches that are pointing down are probably kind of done in. We're out at the wellhead. And uh, it's raining now and things are melting. Quite a few limbs down. Well, the Redneck Garage is 
shooting remote today from just down the hill from our farm which is up in that area and we are down almost to the highway which is making progress I can see pavement over there and you can tell we had a tree down which our next door neighbor came and cleared out all by himself we were heading Kenny and I were heading down with chainsaws <clears throat> Got halfway down the hill and saw that he'd already taken care of it. Woohoo! So the next item of business is changing this flat tire. And we just got it, I just got it up in the air. Got the engine running to melt off these, must be a quarter inch ice or so, eighth inch ice on the windows. And then, once the road melts, we'll be back in business. Well, you can see a set of tire tracks there. We got Kenny on his way. And the hill is such that you could not come up right now. But it is fairly safe braking on the way down. Decent braking, as long as you don't do anything too drastic. Now for the mess here. Well, you can see from this tree, this silver maple here, <clears throat> that uh, I don't think I could have had a tree trimmer in to come and top it and trim it down any better than that. Well, there's a couple of little plumes left, but everything else snapped and came down. And uh, I don't know if you can see on the video or not, but there's quite a pile over here to the left of the tree, a little bit of it in the yard. And our big juniper trees had a few of those come down. Um, Kenny's car was parked underneath that this morning and something came down right behind his car. We were in the middle of breakfast and we just put our fork down, went out to try to get it moved and we did. Um, parked it right up here on the roadway, but uh, out of the way of the tree but uh, I guess there was one of those smaller branches hit him hit his trunk on the way down so he has a little dent in the top of his trunk now but uh, and I did get the tire the flat changed down there but uh, couldn't get it up the hill so it's still sitting down there ready to take to the tire shop and get that flat repaired but you see this actually came down after Kenny moved his car uh... welcome to a short episode of the redneck garage where we'll be looking at something going on with the truck Back on January 3rd, I did something I have never done in my automotive life before. I had to call a tow truck. And that's because we lost a freeze plug on the engine block, which dumped all the coolant, which is right up here at the end of my probe, right behind this engine mount here. And so I've looked at this several times, and I do have several other projects going on, and I've decided to farm this one out. So I'm going to uh, do something for the second time that I've, you know, 50 years of driving, and I have not ever called a tow truck. So we're going to have a tow truck come out tomorrow and haul it to a mechanic. It is possible that we have to actually pull the engine. Now, that's a $2 part down there, but it could be about an $800 or more repair um, just to be able to get at the dang $2 part. So, uh, <clears throat> but this is one. I've got enough other stuff going on, and I'm not quite sure I can do it with my tools and how I'm equipped here. So um, it might also be just a hair beyond me. 
Um, if I had to, I knew I could muddle through it, but I'm going to farm this one out. Well, let's take a quick survey of the farm. After the storm, you can see there's a little bit of snow and ice left, mostly ice. Um, these big trees, which are basically little overgrown backyard juniper <laughs> trees, uh, shed a few things that uh, need some immediate cleanup. And it looks like there's a few hanging down here that are busted off and ready to drop anytime that uh, will need to be taken care of soon. But it's out in front of the house where the mess really got made. We had a little bit of this birch come down. I'm surprised there wasn't more of this one coming down. <clears throat> this is not a particularly healthy tree. It's mostly a big set of three trunks with a lot of ivy growing on them. That ivy's amazing, by the way. I cut the whole perimeter around that tree, I thought the trunk, cut the ivy, you know, like four to six inch chunks out of each strand of ivy, and it didn't put a dent in it. So now it's just feeding off the tree is all. Um, but over here, what was it, Tuesday night, almost a week ago tomorrow, really, when the second ice storm came along, and uh, out here in front of our bedroom window, in the middle of the night, we could hear crack, thunk, crack, thunk, crack, thunk. And so, this silver maple tree self-pruned about 15 to 20 feet off the top of almost every branch. And you can see stuff that's, well, it's laying down over here. There is quite a bit on the ground over there. Um, and looking at the tree itself, there is one or two branches still, well, one, you know, the sprigs off one main branch going up there that's still there, but everything else is busted off which is probably actually good for the tree. <laughs> I'm almost wishing those others had come down as well. Fortunately, nothing hit the house and uh, we're all good. This tree did used to overhang the house, uh, but several, probably five or six years ago, we had a crew out to take down the offending uh, branches and you can kind of see the stumps from them here. <clears throat> yeah, there's the stumps from them that used to overhang the house, so glad we had that done. And there's some that are still hanging up there. They may be there a while. Another one that's kind of bent over looking like it wants to go. Here we are following the farm truck into town. Gonna drop it off at the mechanic and uh, farm out that job. Thanks to a Christmas present from my son Chris, we are introducing some occasional aerial footage to the farm report. Bear with me, I'm just starting to learn how to fly the thing.